Uh, let's see here. Ten point eight. So far, you've done systems of linear equations where you learned how to solve them, finding like uh, when you graph them, you did substitution and elimination. You found where the lines crossed. Okay, yeah. there's three dimensions like x, y, and z. You had three equations and three unknowns. You found where they crossed <coughs> in the three-dimensional uh, uh, box. Okay, um, and those were all straight lines. Uh, you also learned a little bit about um, parabolas, circles, and hyperbolas, and ellipses, and algebra two. Um, and in chapter eleven, we'll get back to those. Um, but t today. Um, we're going to go back to solving systems of equations, but they're not linear. So non-linear equations. So there isn't anything really new except they're not going to be linear equations that you're dealing with. So I'm just going to show you three different types. Substitution is going to be the first part. And everybody knows how to do substitution. So really there isn't anything new to show you, I'm just going to be asking you, how do you do substitution in general? So let's look at uh, number four in your book. This is going to be x squared plus y squared equals 25, and y equals 2x. Substitution. What is it that you're supposed to do to begin? Yeah. Get one uh, variable almost that by itself. Yeah, you want to get one variable solved. Okay. And we have that in the second one. What do you do with that information then? Put it into where the variable is, and that In the other equation. So I'm going to put two x in for the y in the other equation. So x squared plus the y. Oops. Y squared equals 25. Everybody solve it from there, please. Most of what we're going to do today, you can do already. We, you just need to see it because they're nonlinear ex, uh, equations. <sighs> Exciting stuff. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Maybe next year we'll just do story problems the whole year. I'll be here, so. That'd be all right. Yeah, I'll be all right. So you, you just promised that. You just tell everybody next year that you know that's what you guys have to do. Yeah. And that it was easy for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> what is up? For me? I think it's for you. Know, it's very volleyball. So it's cool. See ya. See ya. Glad you got to see me today. Yep. Bye. Don't forget, when you square 2x, that becomes 4x squared. So that's 5x squared equals 25. Divide by 5x squared equals 5. How do I solve that? Square root. So x is going to be what? 2 points. Square root of 5. If we need to graph it, then you go ahead and use the calculator. We'll get to graphing it our last example. What do you do with that information then? Plug it back in. Plug it back into one of the original equations. So y equals 2 times x or 2 radical 5. So what is my answer, or what are my answers? Plus or minus. Why is it plus or minus? I really don't know. They say it's y y square root of y equals 2 radical, right? Y times, y equals 2 oh, times okay. x. This is a positive or negative, because that's where you took the square root of 5. Okay, so whenever you have the square root of 5, or the square root, you have a positive or negative. Okay, so what we really have here, what we're finding, in this case, we have a positive radical 5, 2 radical 5, and a negative radical 5, 2 radical 5. This equation here is a circle. Okay? This equation is a straight line. And what we're finding, if you were to graph this, is where they meet. You can have one answer, meaning if your line 
is tangent to the circle. That's one point where it crosses it. But typically, a line that touches the circle is going to cross it in two points, isn't it? And that's what you found there. So you found the solution to that satisfies both equations. That's what you're doing uh, for substitution. The same thing for elimination. We need to know how to do elimination. That should be easy. That's pretty much almost every section we've done this chapter. Here's your problem. 3x squared plus 4y equals 17. Oh, before I forget, since we're on this one, on your pretest that I gave you, um, you need, there's a, a problem. Number, number six, um, you need to change that. Number six, uh, the second equation on number six is uh, 2x squared, it should be plus 3y, not 3x. What is this? Number six on your pretest. Yeah, it should be, instead of 3x, it should be 3y. Okay? Can I have a baby as well? Is your broken? I guess so. She asked me to grab one, so I was a nice person. Oh, you should grab one and then I thought I had that. Oh, I thought you said I should grab one. That's really rude. I'm going to show them. Okay. Back to number 10. Okay. Now, how do you do elimination? What's the process for elimination? Yeah, you need to have uh, one set of coefficients <coughs> the opposite of each other. In this case, you don't have any easy way of doing it, so you're going to have to do something to both equations. So if I multiply by a negative 2 on the top and a 3 at the bottom, everybody do this. And finish it, please. Add the two equations together and solve the whole thing. So I multiply the top equation by negative 2. Multiply the bottom equation by positive 3. Do you add all three of those together? No. There's a one. No, the third one is the top one multiplied by negative two. Yeah. Multiply yeah. Multiply the bottom one. Well, then you do the bottom one, but okay. And I want you to finish it. Okay. So this is what you did back in section one of chapter 10, and pretty much all matrices you've done this too, except for section six and five, I guess. Zero Those are great. Yeah. Those have great weekends. Awesome. I'd love to hear that. I wish you could say the same. You wish you could be me, I know. And you're right. Done? Are you kidding me? Seriously? Dude, it's been a long day, okay? Which is 
something you all should at least recognize when we do it. You may not remember everything about it. Also with parabolas, we have directrix and uh, focal points. But I'll go over that in uh, chapter 11. Do you guys remember directrix, focal point? You may not remember how to do that, but. The quiz slash test. Yeah, so I, I know you did it because Algebra 2 just finished doing it. Thursday. OK. Uh, just got done helping some students in Algebra 2. Uh, it's almost identical to what we're doing in chapter 11 until the end of chapter 11. We go back to the polar board and see. For a short time. Yeah, sure. To the airport. Okay. I'm gonna put this where I have uh, my X term first. And typically, this is your parabolic equation, your general trinomial, x squared plus bx plus c. If you have a b term, then you gotta find the axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry, remember, is negative b over 2a. Remember doing that? Negative b over 2a. But if you don't have a b term, then there's, it makes it fairly Pardon simple. Pardon the interruption. The Japanese club has returned from their field trip. They should be back in their classroom very shortly. Thank you. Okay. Axis of symmetry is that dotted line that your vertex is on that you can fold the parabola over on itself. Remember? Okay, so if you have a B term, you're going to want to do this, and that's how you solve for the vertex, is you plug this information back into the equation. But in an equation like this, we should understand really what it is before we even start. C, the constant, that's where it always crosses the y-axis. A tells us whether or not it opens up or down. If it's positive, it opens up. If it's negative, it opens down. So let's take a look at this, see if we can graph this without uh, an axis of symmetry. Crosses the y-axis at positive 4. And A is negative, so it opens down. So it's going to go this direction like this. Now, I want to know what crosses the x-axis. We call that the zeros. We did that in the first semester. You did it in algebra 2, and you also did it in algebra 1. Zeros would be the factored numbers, the quadratic formula numbers, those are all called zeros, where it crosses the x-axis. So if y is zero, that gives me my x-intercepts. So if we plug zero in for y here and solve, what do we get? Everybody solve it, please. Solve for x. Solve for x. Hmm? Solve for x. Those are your zeros. So let me give you another one, and you tell me. Graph that one, please, on top of that graph. Opens up or down, or across the y-axis, what your vertex is, and I want to know the zeros. Okay.
opens up because A is positive. It goes through the y-axis at C, negative 4. There's no B, so I know that that's the intercept. And the zeros are positive and negative 2. So my solutions would be 2, 0, and negative 2, 0. Those are my solutions to this system of equations by graphing. Where do they, where do they meet? Okay. So that's substitution, that's elimination, and that's graphing with nonlinear equations. Any questions? How do you math? How do you know what? How do you math? <laughs> do you have any questions? No. Yeah. What, the test on Thursday? Test is Thursday. Your assignment for today. Uh. <laughs> Page 702, 3 to 41 odds. Okay, we can get more.